5G is coming. 5G is coming. We've all heard the rumors. It's a trending topic inside the telecommunication space, and it's a buzzing topic inside the wireless or cellular trail camera space. Maybe you've seen carrier commercials, uh, advertising 5G, new networks, new speeds. Maybe you caught a social post or something on a forum where there's discussion about um, you know folks commenting on 4G products soon to be irrelevant or outdated. Um, but what does that mean for us as trail camera users? Are 4G LTE products going to be left behind? So not that long ago, most of us can recall the transition from 3G to 4G or three, the third generation wireless communications to fourth generation wireless uh, communications where 3G was de decommissioned and cellular trail cameras operating on that network, on the 3G network, were rendered basically paperweights or at minimum uh, standard SD card cameras. They basically lost their ability to communicate over a cellular network because of the incompatibility of the camera technology and what carriers had done with um, new network technology. And a lot of trail camera users, they were left with bad tastes in their mouth. Uh, they were frustrated and quite frankly, some of them were, were pretty, pretty pissed. Luckily, that does not seem to be the case uh, for the build out of 5G networks by carriers. And we're going to talk about and walk you through the reasons why. Uh, and for just for reference, you know, my background prior to Exodus, prior to starting Exodus, comes from telecommunications, where I worked for an engineering firm managing build out projects for most of the major carriers across the United States when they were updating uh, new technologies or updating coverage in different areas across the United States. So I have a little bit of a uh, little bit of background and some basic knowledge of how this stuff operates, how it works, and what these carriers are doing long term with their plans of network updating and expanding uh, network coverage. To understand the situation, we need to really look at how carriers approach building out their networks. And since the 90s, telecom has been the Wild West. It's always been a race to you know who can have the most coverage, who can have the fastest speeds, and who could get there the quickest. Everything else is basically irrelevant to them. And a lot of that has been seen while networks were being updated from first generation wireless to 2G to 3G and then to ultimately 4G. So prior to 4G technology, carriers had really, they didn't have a long-term vision of uh, consistent technology or network coverage. And, and ultimately what that left consumers, I uh, kind of left us behind as consumers because as they were rolling out 2G or from 1G to 2G, 2G to 3G, um, without any long-term solution, as these updates and uh, network coverage was increased or updated, a lot of the products we were using um, simply were just incompatible. But that mindset started to change with the evolution and build out of 4G LTE. Networks finally got to a place where speeds were fast enough and stable enough to support most major communications and coverage was consistent enough across the, the US where the majority of folks using cellular wireless devices had coverage nearly everywhere. So that brings us to the present day 5G. What is fifth generation wireless and what is its purpose? I think to fully understand the objective of 5G, you have to understand the way of the future, the way the world is moving with connected devices and the connected world. And I really think that the driving factor, and not just myself, this isn't subjective, this is um, you know across all technology spectrums and the way the world operates, but the way of the future is a connected world. The Internet of Things um, is really the driving force behind 5G. And that looks like, you know, autonomous vehicles or self-driving vehicles, um, you know, self-serve com uh, consumer shops where everything is connected, streaming manufacturing processes and data, um, and instantaneous medical data um, is really all of the Internet of Things. That's the driving factor behind 5G. And 5G consists of much broader band network. So they're using um, very broad bandwidth over short distances where they can move a massive amount of data over, um, you know, very, very fast over or short distances. Where if when you look at low band frequencies, they're moving small amounts of data a lot slower, but they can push that a lot further. Um, so that's kind of the baseline 
when you're thinking about RF and radio waves and um, what these different networks really look like. But with 5G being focused on moving large amounts of data over short distances, the rollout or build out of this from carriers consists or is focused around densely populated areas, which are what they consider to be major markets, um, metropolitan areas like Chicago, New York, LA. And then they tend to fill in the gaps between that network coverage at a later time. They always roll out these new technologies or new networks uh, where they can make the biggest impact with the most amount of people, thus them focusing on these metropolitan areas. But the difference between, you know, the evolution from 3G to 4G and 4G to 5G is that carriers plan to leave 4G LTE networks up and running sometime between uh, or to the time between 2030 and 2035, where dedicated 4G networks are going to be used for less priority devices and communications. So that looks like voice calls, text messages, and other low priority devices like wireless trail cameras or cellular trail cameras. And again, going back to um, you know the solution of 4G LTE from 3G, this is the first time carriers have thought about offering or solving the problem of longer term networks. Um, and you know leaving 4G LTE in place has been the plan from the start. So now on to the trail cameras. What does all of this mean to us as trail camera users operating or buying 4G LTE devices. And in short, the impact for us is gonna be next to zero over the next 10 years. In fact, most cameras simply won't last that long. So the existing 4G LTE devices and all of you folks running 4G LTE cameras really have no concern. And for the time being, uh, with the proposed lifespan of 4G LTE networks ranging out into you know, 2030, 2035, there's really no cause for concern for future per future purchases um, where the thought process might be if I buy a 4G LTE camera in 2021, in a couple of years, it's going to be outdated and rendered um, you know, a standard SD card camera or paperweight. It's simply not the case here. You know, there will be a day where trail camera technologies transition with additional speeds and capabilities to 5G, but we are many, many, many years away from that. And ultimately, it's important to note that regardless of what module or technology is in the cellular camera that you're using, you still need to have coverage at, or that specific coverage, that specific network technology at that camera location. And with most cellular camera locations being in rural areas, um, you know, not typically around these ma major metropolitan areas, or major cities, major markets, we're all safe continuing to use and purchase 4G LTE GAN cameras. So I hope uh, this video helps shed some light on this situation. Like I've said, it's been a it's kind of a trending topic. Uh, it's been some buzz going around social media, different forums, even on some YouTube channels and some podcasts. So I hope that us talking about this and shedding some light is intriguing some thoughts and sparking some questions inside of your mind. And if you do have any specific questions on this topic, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and answer some of your questions. Uh, we put all this information out to help all trail camera users, regardless if you're running an Exodus camera, wild game camera, the brand doesn't really matter. We just want to be able to educate people and help you guys become better consumers and better trail camera users. So if the end of the day, you're not running an Exodus camera, that is okay, but do us a solid and smash that subscribe button.